Hello, I'm Jordan Smith with IBM. I'm a product manager on Maximo Manage's UI front-end frameworks. And today I'm going to talk to you about the skin in Moz 8, um, which is a skin that we created to be more in line with the other applications in the suite, uh, specifically the newer ones such as Health and Predict and a lot of the newer applications that you'll see coming uh, from development over the next few years. Uh, so for the most part, this skin is uh, like you'd expect from other skins, uh, very visual in nature. Uh, there's not a whole lot of functionality changes, though I will go over some of those. Uh, a lot of the changes you'll see were to iconography, colors, uh, and the start center here, for example, uh, is very much just a visual update uh, there's no functional changes here to, to mention at all. Uh, just a couple new colors for the charting and new icons. Um, you will notice quite a difference though in the navigation. Uh, so at the top we have the masthead. <clears throat> this is the Maz uh, suite header, which is uh, the same header you'll see in all of the other applications in the suite. And there are also some manage specific features here, such as this, this is the bulletin board. Um, you'll see the reporting icon here opens your reporting. So a lot of the features that were available in the old header are simply being migrated over into the new header uh, when you are in the manage uh, application so that you can still do all the things you were able to do before. And you'll see here we'll also have a bit of a hybrid in that you'll get your start center and system information help uh, in the same place they used to be in this info icon, but you'll now also have some global help items uh, for the suite uh, that you'll be able to access. And the profile is very similar to that as well. You'll see your uh, suite login information. You'll be able to log out to your managed profile uh, in the suite pages, but you'll also be able to access your manage specific dialogues, such as uh, your default information dialog that's always been uh, in manage. Um, the app switcher here, if I was in a true suite environment, I'd be able to access other suite applications such as health and predict, uh, but this is not a true environment, so nothing is going to load. And that's the same uh, with this little blank space here, which is reserved for the admin tools. If I was logged into the suite as an admin, I'd be able to launch out to the admin pages here. Another piece that's changed quite a bit is the side navigation. Uh, so here you can see this is now the side uh, navigation styling. Instead of opening to the right-hand side and outwards, items are going to open downwards. So opening an administration, uh, that's kind of what that looks like. If I go another level into resources, uh, there's a third level of indentation to show me uh, all of the applications that are available. And the scrolling works here uh, as well. And it all behaves on hover. So if I hover out, uh, it goes away, hover back over, it comes back into view. If I'd like to, I can pin it open using this hamburger menu. Another element here that we've been able to improve a bit is the find navigation feature. So if I type in, say, work, I'll see that the keyword work is coming up in a number of places, and I see the applications that include that, but I'm also able to tell what part of the module navigation they live in. Uh, so here I see that work view is inside of administration, which in earlier versions of Maximo, it was difficult to tell. Uh, so we improved that a bit with this release. I'm going to go ahead and drill into work order tracking, and we'll take a look at the work order list. So our typical table in Maximo has, uh, has not changed too much. Uh, really just some visual styling updates. Um, the actions in the top right uh, here are the same. They have only moved to be in the right instead of the left of the screen. You have your overflow actions uh, present in this, in this menu. You have your search capability here for finding um, what's available in this list and drilling directly into it. So these features are relatively unchanged, just slightly different styling and iconography. Looking at the form itself, also not much has changed here other than the styling. We have our uh, quick launch menu. Uh, fields that are read only will not have a white background. You'll see that they are gray, so I cannot 
type into these, but anything that's editable will be uh, a white background. My left hand action navigation here is fairly the same. I'm able to pen it by clicking this chevron and that will pen it and move everything on, else on the screen over. Uh, it's been separated from the side navigation. You'll see that they are two separate elements. Uh, we have some future improvements being made to the available queries that will be released in 8.7. Uh, these will be available in a dropdown uh, since we know that uh, some clients have a lot of these. Uh, so they'll be a little bit more usable and you won't have to scroll to get to the common actions anymore. So that is a change that is not quite ready yet, but coming. A couple other things I'd like to point out on the form. You see the toggles here in this section. Um, we are still working to improve these, but rather than using checkboxes, we've adopted a kind of more standard web uh, behavior and look and feel for toggles. So that's something that is true or turned on will have a green toggle to the right. Something that is turned off will have a gray toggle to the left. And a disabled toggle looks more like this. Uh, it will have the circle to the left or right, but it'll be much lighter and clicking on it will have no action. Uh, whereas these are interactive and update as you interact with them. Uh, another piece to really notice for navigation here is the tabs. Uh, we've done quite a few improvements to tabs. <clears throat> In the past, tabs would wrap down if there were a large number of them. Uh, but now what we're doing instead is we're truncating. So you'll see here as I make my screen much smaller that the tabs um, are not wrapping but now have a chevron for me to interact with and swipe them left and right. So I can see all the tabs by, by swiping left and right or I can interact with this menu. Uh, chevron pointing down will open the full menu of all the tabs that are available and I can click on one and that will become my active tab and it will uh, kind of pin itself to the center uh, if that's the position of it. So big improvements to tabs, a little bit uh, more usable. They're also now docked at the top of the screen. So if I scroll, you'll see that they are always visible um, so that I'll be able to go to a different page without having to scroll back up. A couple other things to highlight uh, for the help text. So if I were to click on a uh, label in the past, we required you to hit uh, F1 or a function key on Mac in order to get help text from the label. Uh, but now all you need to do is click uh, any of the labels and you'll be able to get that internal field help, which will tell you what that, uh, what that object is. Uh, our dialogues have changed slightly in styling. So if I were to take, say, a change status, this is what our dialogues will look like. Uh, they will have large buttons at the bottom uh, for cancel and OK. Primary actions are, are very bright blue. And I'm going to go to the Assignments tab here. and We'll take a look at a couple features that we have uh, that we've changed for, for tabs. Uh, so here we have an Assignments tab. And you'll see that the, the buttons for these tables are, are no longer being displayed. Uh, this is a system property that you can change if you'd like, but by default, the actions for all tables are going to be in the top right. So you see this actions button. If I were to click on this, uh, I will see the three available actions. Uh, rather than having these actions kind of spread across um, the bottom of the table, sometimes requiring me to scroll to the bottom of the table to see them, now they're always available in the top right. Creating a new row looks a lot like this. So clicking the plus icon here will add my new row. I'm going to add a couple new rows here, just with no data inside of them. Uh, and you'll start to notice that another improvement we made is the row details. So in the past, if I had something like this where there were three rows, and I were to open the details by clicking the chevron, the details would actually open at the very bottom of the table. Uh, we've changed that now to have them open in line. So uh, on the row that's being clicked, those details will appear directly below that row, 
rather than at the bottom of the table, which is sometimes a bit confusing uh, to kind of figure out that I need to scroll down to see it when there's a very large table. And it's kind of more in line with what you'd see in other expanding row table uh, user experiences found elsewhere in the web. That's all I had to share today. Thank you for watching and please reach out to me with any questions or comments uh, through my phone or email address. Thanks. Bye.